weekend. Next, another take on Western money in the developing world. International corruption has been the focus of a nine-month investigation by our PBS colleagues at Frontline. Correspondent Lowell Bergman has this special report produced for the NewsHour on the damage done by large-scale bribery in Nigeria. Last September, in federal court in Houston, Texas, corporate America paid attention when this man, Albert Jack Stanley, pled guilty to bribery. Jack, you don't want to say anything? Stanley, the former CEO of KBR, then a subsidiary of the Halliburton Corporation, agreed to a record seven-year prison sentence for masterminding the payment of $180 million in bribes in Nigeria. Mr. Stanley's been cooperating and cooperated today. As a result, earlier this year, KBR and the Halliburton Corporation agreed to pay more than a half billion dollars in fines, the largest fine ever for international bribery by a U.S. company. This case has opened a window into the way multinational corporations do business in corruption-plagued Nigeria. The World Bank has reported that Nigeria has lost $300 billion over the last few decades due to corruption. I will not argue with them. $300 billion disappeared. Over a period of years. Olusegun Obasanjo was president of Nigeria from 1999 to 2007. Fighting corruption is like fighting a war in a battlefield. A former Nigerian general, President Abbasanjo is a founding member of the anti-corruption organization Transparency International. Corruption, you would agree, is endemic in Nigeria. It is. Corruption is a cancer that must not be allowed to be in the body of a nation because it destroys. And that is what we were fighting against in Nigeria. In 2003, President Obasanjo appointed this man, Nuhu Urbadu, as Nigeria's first chief corruption hunter. We went after the very powerful people, the rich ones, those who hitherto were above the law. One of the governors, we think, he took close to about 75% of the resources of the state. One governor took 75% of the money yeah. from the state government? And this is a state that is probably made over a billion dollars in terms of revenue. The governor diverted minimum 75% of that for himself, alone. Well, the people are living on $2 a day. That's it. Corruption has taken over the engine of government in Nigeria. It's what runs everything. The cost of this corruption is most evident here in the Niger Delta the center of Nigeria's oil industry. But all that oil wealth does not reach the people, who live in abject poverty, with the land and water devastated by spills, and the air poisoned by the constant burning of natural gas, called flaring. All this the consequence of out-of-control corruption. And before you took office, no one, no company, had been prosecuted in Nigeria Never. For bribery. Never. And you come in and you make how many cases? Thousands. And then we got convictions, about 270 something. 270 something convictions. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. World record, I believe, by and any standard, yeah. Ribaru says he went out of his way to set an example. No one was immune. You investigated your boss? The Inspector General of Police, yes, I investigated him. I seized $150 million from him and sent him to prison. And governors of some of the wealthiest state governments? Several. Didn't they try to bribe you? Several times. Several. Indeed, I was, at one point there was a particular incident where I was given $15 million cash. You were given this money? Directly. Former governor of one of the major Delta states in Nigeria, he gave me cash, $15 million, in bucks, two heavy big bucks and I use it as evidence against him. But Rubaru says when it came to the really big payoffs involving major multinational companies with bribes going to the top leadership of the country, he often felt powerless. Most of this has happened outside Nigeria. The documents are not in Nigeria. The money is not in Nigeria. The entire transactions do take place outside. That is the difficulty I faced. The big chief executives are not in Nigeria. 
The only time they go to Nigeria is to go and give somebody money. Which is exactly what the U.S. Justice Department found when they began to investigate the Halliburton KBR case as part of a crackdown on international bribery. The bribery scheme began more than a decade ago when KBR led a consortium of companies competing for the contract to build this massive six billion dollar liquefied natural gas plant in the Niger Delta. The KBR consortium led by Jack Stanley would pay a hundred and eighty million dollars in bribes to a succession of Nigeria's leaders to secure that contract. It's one of the few cases we've seen where you've got all the players in a complex international structure of fraud, corruption and uh, uh, self-enrichment. So Veteran see, journalist Patrick Smith has followed the case. You see the sorts of things that corporate executives from the U.S. discussed. How much should I bribe a head of state? How much should I bribe uh, the chief of the army? So you see the whole system laid bare. The U.S. case reveals that in the mid-1990s, the first bribes went to Nigeria's brutal strongman, Sani Abacha, who set a new standard for corruption. His period was one of the darkest moments in the history of our country. We estimate that he took close to about six billion dollars. Six billion dollars? Alone, single-handedly. The bribes fueled Abacha's excessive lifestyle, and his unusual death would become a metaphor for greed. And the story is that he took uh, an enormous amount of Viagra and then uh, was entertained by a succession of prostitutes from around the world in one sort of marathon sex session. And after that, he was left a wreck on the floor, foaming at the mouth, and that's where he was found. So there are various explanations. What was pretty clear was that the Nigerian elite, particularly his fellow generals, had decided they'd had enough of him, and a lot of people wanted Abacha dead. But after Abacha died, Jack Stanley continued the bribery scheme. And because of his success in landing big contracts, Stanley was promoted to become CEO of KBR in 1998 by the man who was then running Halliburton, Dick Cheney. Despite the fact that millions in bribes were paid while he was CEO, Cheney has always denied knowing anything about the bribery conspiracy. And so far, Jack Stanley, according to sources, has not directly implicated his former boss. But Stanley has implicated former Nigerian President Obasanjo, who denies ever taking a bribe. You have been able to resist the temptations then? Well, I have been, I've been investigated and reinvestigated and reinvestigated, and nobody can find corruption around me. Because you know your critics say you're just too smart. Well, if it is being too smart, then somebody who is smarter should have found something. In the interviews we've done and in the public documents that are now in file in the United States, it does indicate that there were meetings that took place while you were president. No, I won't say that meetings were not taking place. But I've just told you that there were ministers in my own government that participated in corruption. It reached to your vice president, right? It reached to people in your own political party. I will not uh, say no. In fact, sources in the U.S. government say that Jack Stanley has revealed that he met face-to-face -face with then-President Obasanjo in 2001 about continuing the KBR bribery scheme. Nuhu Rabadu says that while he was unable to find any evidence implicating Obasanjo, he believes the Justice Department knows if the former president is in fact corrupt. And they know exactly what happened. Hopefully something will come out. I think it's only right and fair. Let the world know exactly what really happened and who are involved. The real tragedy, Ribadu says, is that $180 million in bribes could have saved lives in Nigeria. $180 million could build 100 hospitals. This $180 million could build 100 schools probably will provide thousands of kilometers of roads by African standard. Today, Rabadu is no longer hunting corruption in Nigeria. Soon after President Obasanjo left office, Rabadu himself was removed and became one of the hunted. He was chased down and shot at, but his bulletproof car saved his life. I survived it. They wanted to kill me. If you fight corruption, it fights back. And I fought corruption in Nigeria. 
but I'm lucky. I'm out. They missed you. Yeah, very lucky for now. He now lives in exile in the United Kingdom. As for KBR's Jack Stanley, he admitted to not only arranging the bribes, but also diverting millions from the bribe money into his own personal Swiss bank account. Stanley's testimony in this case has already resulted in additional indictments, and more are expected.